Hello everyone, welcome to this session of In-Depth Economics. Today we are discussing two important concepts, GDP and welfare. We all know that GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product. Let us use this abbreviation to understand today's topic. When we are talking of GDP, we are considering the production of goods and services in the economy. Welfare is associated with people. Often, increase in GDP is considered to increase the welfare of the people. In that case, there is a direct relationship between the two. So, GDP is an indicator of welfare. But the relationship between GDP and welfare is complex and multifaceted. Economists are of the view that GDP is an imperfect indicator of welfare. Let us find out why is it so and for that I will give you an acronym, DIRECT, which will summarize all the points that we are going to learn in today's tutorial. Gross domestic product is the total value of all final goods and services produced within the country during a year. GDP is often used as an indicator of a country's economic performance. Welfare refers to the overall well-being and standard of living of the people of a country. It is a multifaceted concept that aims to capture the overall prosperity and satisfaction of the population. Relationship between GDP and welfare GDP is often used as an indicator to measure welfare of people. But GDP alone does not fully capture the overall well-being of people. It does not take into account many important factors which have a direct impact on welfare of the population. Let us now go into the details of these factors using the acronym DIRECT. D in DIRECT stands for distribution of GDP. Let us consider you are attending a pizza party with 10 of your friends. Each of you will expect to get an equal piece of pizza. If you are getting a smaller piece than your friends, then your level of satisfaction will also be lower than the others. Likewise, the distribution of GDP refers to the manner in which a country's total GDP is allocated among its citizens. GDP does not reveal how evenly or unevenly income is distributed among the population. Thus, an increase in GDP of a country may not lead to rise in welfare. GDP primarily indicates economic growth. Welfare, on the other hand, assesses the overall quality of life experienced by individuals. I indirect stands for income disparities. The welfare of people depends upon the per head availability of goods and services. Further, Welfare emphasizes the equitable distribution of benefits among the members of the country. A growing GDP does not necessarily guarantee a reduction in income disparities or an improvement in overall welfare. This is because the rise in GDP may be concentrated in the hands of a few individuals or firms. R stands for rate of population. Suppose you are attending a pizza party with 15 of your friends instead of 10. If the size of the pizza remains the same, each of you will now get a much smaller piece which will reduce the level of your satisfaction. If a country's rate of population growth is higher than the rate of GDP growth, then it will have an adverse impact on the economic welfare of the country. It happens because the per capita availability of goods and services will decrease due to the rise in population. E stands for externalities. Externalities means any benefit or harm of an activity that is caused by an individual or an organization for which they are not paid or penalized. There are two types of externalities, positive externalities and negative externalities. Positive externalities are those activities that benefit other people. So, positive externalities results in an increase in welfare. Negative externalities are those activities that harm other people. So, negative externalities results in a decrease in welfare. Let us consider a public park which is used by the people for pleasure for which they have not made any payment. So, it is an example of positive externality. Now, let us suppose there is a group of people smoking in the park. 
they are creating negative externality for which they are not always penalized. C stands for change in price. Sometimes the GDP of an economy increases because of the increase in the price of the goods and services, but not because of the rise in physical output of goods and services. In such a case, taking GDP as an indicator to measure welfare is not reliable. T indirect stands for transactions which are non-monetary in nature. Non-monetary transactions are those in which commodities and services are produced but not traded for money. Many activities in an economy are not evaluated in monetary terms but influence the welfare of people. For example, the domestic services a woman provides at home are not paid for. Another example of non-monetary transaction is barter exchanges, where goods or services are directly exchanged against each other. Since money is not being used here, these exchanges are not registered in GDP. Now let us take the example of cultivators, who usually retain a part of their output for self-consumption. So, this part of their produce which does not reach the market is not included in GDP, but the goods consumed at home will provide satisfaction and thus have a positive impact on welfare. These are cases of underestimation of GDP. Hence, GDP calculated in the standard manner may not give us a clear indication of the productive activity and well-being of a country. To conclude, we can say that welfare of people cannot be solely measured by GDP. But GDP can be considered as a component of welfare. Social welfare functions can include GDP as one of its components along with others like health, education, human rights, etc. So, whenever you want to answer any questions related to GDP and welfare, just use the acronym DIRECT which will help you to remember all the points effortlessly. It is as simple as that. I hope all of you will find today's tutorial useful. I'll be back next week with a new tutorial and some more acronyms which summarizes economic concepts so that you can learn easily and remember effectively. Till then, happy learning!